Hey friends, welcome back to Let's Tutor Accountancy. In our previous sessions, we learned some of the capital structure ratios that is equity ratio, debt to capital, debt to equity and debt to total assets ratio. And today, we are going to complete this type with capital gearing ratio and proprietary ratio with the help of an example and analyzing the same. But before we go ahead, do hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon for further updates. And friends, you can also visit our website www.letshoot.com to check out our other online courses available at incredible prices. So let's begin with understanding the concept of capital gearing ratio. Now if we just do a small recap, in previous session, we studied debt equity ratio which is derived by comparing total debt with total shareholders equity. So now there is a little change in capital gearing ratio which compares fixed interest or dividend bearing funds with common stockholders equity. So what is fixed interest or dividend bearing funds and common stockholders equity? As discussed in our previous debt ratios, equity includes equity share capital, preference share capital and reserves and surplus and debt includes short term as well as long term interest bearing funds. Now friends, can you tell us which segment of this entire capital gets fixed rate of return? Yes, your answer is correct. It is preference share capital as they have fixed rate of dividend and borrowed funds to which company has to pay fixed interest rate. But the equity shareholders may or may not get dividends and the rate of return also varies year to year depending upon the profits. So now let's look at the formula of capital gearing ratio. It is calculated by dividing fixed interest or dividend bearing funds to equity shareholders funds. Fixed cost bearing funds is total of preference share capital, long term loans, debentures, bonds, short term loans, bank overdraft and other interest bearing borrowed funds. And equity shareholders funds or common stockholders equity is equal to equity share capital plus reserves in surplus, less accumulated losses less any miscellaneous expenditure appearing in the balance sheet which are not yet written off. Let's take an example to understand this in more detail. The balance sheet of Lucky Limited is given as on 31st March 2019. Here, fixed interest or dividend bearing funds will include 8% preference share capital of 50,000, 10% debentures of 50,000 and short term loan at 7% of 20,000. So total comes to 120,000. This will be divided by equity shareholders funds that is equity share capital of 1 lakh and reserves and surplus of 30,000 totaling to 1 lakh 30,000. And this gives a ratio of 0 0.92 or it can even be expressed as 1.2 is to 1.3. Now how do we analyze this? Here the company is said to be low geared since it has comparatively higher equity. So the company is said to be low geared if the larger portion of capital is composed of common stockholders equity compared to lower debt and highly geared when it is composed of less common stockholders equity compared to higher debt. So this ratio assesses how a company structure itself and the amount of risk involved with its chosen capital structure. Lender uses this ratio to decide whether or not to extend the credit an investor uses to determine whether to invest or not. Hence, capital gearing ratio is a simple ratio to find out gearing that is comparing debt with the equity of the company and capital strength of the company. A low geared company tends to pay less interest and dividend ensuring interest of common stockholders. The optimum ratio though varies from industry to industry. So now moving on to the last capital structure ratio that is proprietary ratio. This ratio measures the proportion of total assets financed by the shareholders. This ratio is also known as equity ratio or net worth to total assets ratio. It is calculated by dividing proprietary funds by total assets. Proprietary funds are also termed as shareholders funds or equity which includes equity share capital, preference share capital, reserves and surplus minus accumulated losses or miscellaneous expenditure not written off. Total assets exclude 
fictitious assets and losses. Here, some analysts also consider total tangible assets instead of total assets, that is total assets minus intangible assets. So let's calculate proprietary ratio for the same example as considered previously. Firstly, proprietary funds will include equity share capital of 1 lakh, preference share capital of 50,000, reserves and surplus of 30,000 which totals to 1 lakh 80,000 divided by total assets of 3 lakhs arriving at the ratio of 60%. So here, the proprietary ratio of 60% means stockholders have contributed 60% of total assets and the remaining 40% have been contributed by outside creditors. Higher ratio indicates lesser dependence on external sources and better long-term solvency position of the company. A lower ratio indicates the company is heavily depending on the external sources for its operations, posing greater risk to the creditors. So this ratio is used to evaluate the soundness of the capital structure of the company. Friends, having a very high proprietary ratio does not always mean the best as it depicts the company might not be taking full advantage of debt financing for its operations and that is also not a good sign for the stockholders. So a company should mix and balance its internal and external sources in a way that none of them is too high in comparison to other. Also do note that for evaluating company's capital structure and its soundness, not only one or two ratios are significant but many other factors are to be considered and analyzed together. So friends, here we complete capital structure ratios. In the next session, we will start with coverage ratios. So stay tuned with us. You can also access to our online courses and avail all the benefits at very minimum prices by pressing the join button and becoming our prime member. If you liked our session, do like, share, comment and yes, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to get the updates for all of our upcoming videos. So see you all in the next session. Till then, keep watching, keep learning. Thank you.